Hello, it's Sarah. I am, as you can see, working on another mosaic, polymer clay mosaic. This one is a Christmas theme, and I really think it's going to be cute. I have a lot of ideas. I want to put some beading on the top, some stick pins. I didn't, yes, I did. I want to show you um, one of these guys. Something along these lines. We'll see how it goes. But this is an ATB block that I made. And I just take wire and string a few beads and use my um, Dremel and glue them in. So that's what I'm planning. I'm also going to add, I think I'm going to add some type of rickrack to the edge or something. I have um, these shiny ribbons. This one is kind of turning out really cool. I filmed a lot of the making of these tiles and I don't know why I didn't post it. They were just really long but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stick with what I do today. Let's just make this polymer clay Tuesday or polymer clay day. I don't know. <laughs> don't, don't uh, quote me for a day to put this up but um, I've really enjoyed this. This is a little bit, I've put a lot more of these cabs on here. These are these um, you can get these at Etsy vendors. I forget the store that I got these, but they're like, this is a one by two glass cabochon. And it's like a little magnifying glass almost. And you just glue. These are actually images from this tag set, this K and Company. Their images are so cute. I'll bet you, um, gra Graphic 45, see I did this angel. Here, she's right here. I did... So I have quite a lot of those. I have a ton of buttons. I just went into my Christmas stash and buttons, these buttons especially, I found these. These were like a, because I have like, I had, these are charms. So these are um, enamel charms, but these are buttons. These are from a button pack, the little um, him, him, the Santa, the uh, poinsettia, the angels. These are button packs, but these were so cool because they're so dimensional. Can you see how dimensional that is? and the bell. I have more of these, but I only, I don't know, I only did a couple. Um, so I've actually filmed a lot of this stuff, but I don't know, it's so long and just, I don't know. I didn't like what I was seeing and I wanna change a few things too. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over um, this snowman. I don't like how he turned out. I wanna do this bird and this snowman again. And I'm not going to use the red. The red, the only red that I have to color tiles with is this uh, Inca Gold. And it's a cream. And for the purposes that I want to use it, it, it didn't work. I mean, it looks okay on the scarf. Like, actually, this one doesn't look bad. But I want to, I think I want to put silver. Because I made a whole bunch of these filler tiles with, um, I'm gonna, I'll do this with you guys then, we'll do this. These are just a snowflake stamp that I have, a big block snowflake stamp, this one. See that? And I just cut it up into all different shapes and sizes to use as filler, but then I used the blue Inca Gold, because a lot of um, my Christmas, other Christmas designs, I do blue, um, you know what I mean, when I've done, like snow, when I do snow, like here, here's a, I use, I think I just do it blue and white. And this is totally digressing, but like something like this. Like that's a design that I've used before when I do snowflakes. So I think that's where I was, what I was thinking. But for this design, I think I wanna go with the silver. I wanna go silver, gold, blue, uh, green and red. So that's it. That's all I'm gonna kinda try and, um, I mean my, I love, look how cute these turned out. I have this, um, the stamp. It's a Hero Art stamp. It's just a little uh, stocking variety, right? And I cut them out. I actually cut them into the shape. So that's different. I mean, I don't usually, you know, usually everything's a square or a triangle, or not a triangle, a rectangle or some variation of those shapes because um, that's how it's easier to place mosaic. But I think I'm going to put this tree. And then I'm just going to fill in as best I can, and I'm going to see how it looks. I think it's going to look so cool. So 
I think I'm gonna just take you for a little um, look at this look at this snow I mean Santa see the red it's difficult I mean you can still see it and he's cute enough I like him I'm gonna use him and I had this holly little um, this was a button set and it just happened to fit perfectly in that little corner where there was a lot of room so I love how that turned out um, so yeah I mean it's very it's kind of like pity piddling around so to make a video when I'm kind of creating and I don't know where I'm going with something it's kind of long like it just takes long and it's a lot of me just thinking I don't know how to speed up my videos so I think this is going to be better now that I've had a look at what I want to use these are other filler towels I just uh, did a bunch of black this is a different stamp set it's actually I think it's supposed to be oh, that's not it yeah I pulled like different stamp sets that I have that are deep etched um, but this I don't think I could really cut this apart very easily because the words run into each other so I wasn't sure about I didn't use that one yet um, I have a lot of different stuff on my desk right now I'm trying to find so here's the Santa and all I did was cut him, just use the top portion of him. And I mean, he's hard to, I think it's cool. I think it turned out pretty cool. And I like it on the black clay. The black clay, I probably should have outlined here in like gold or silver. Maybe I'll do another one of them. I could do another one of them on camera for you. And I think I'm going to do another because I need them. I'm going to do another one of those snowflakes. But this is the other one. This one's a, a design by Hero Arts. I don't know if it has a name. But it looks like snowflakes to me. I think it is snowflakes. But it could probably be a stars background too. You know? But that's what all these black... And they're filler tiles. These are just filler tiles. I didn't really need to do much with them. But this is what I'm going to stick in here just to fill in blank spaces once I get um, and then these red ones this is a poinsettia stamp how much time I'm at seven minutes already see time flies on video I don't get it um, but this was not as deeply etched and you can see I mean it still picks up this is poinsettia like some of them look really cool you can tell that's like the inside of a poinsettia a little bit but again just the filler tile just to add a little more color here and there um, you get the you get the picture right so I've decided I'm gonna go with red and black green and red clay mm, that's it I'm gonna use gold and silver mica powders and that's it I'm gonna keep it simple because I was pulling the blue in I don't want the blue after all um, yeah, so unless I'm using it to color a design. So I'm going to do the snowman again because I don't like how he turned out. And the bird. I'm going to do the snowman and the bird because I want some more white tiles, like white focal pieces. And I think these are cute focal pieces. And I can also talk to you a little bit about different types of stamps that you use. Because these are um, photopolymer. Where are they? <coughs> um... Here, these are, I think this is a Hero Art set, It's probably on my desk somewhere, I'll, I'll, when we go away I'll be back and I'll show you, but these I use a release, I just spray a little water on these before I stamp them into the clay because sometimes they, they really stick in there, um, it seems like the, the, uh, the deep etched red stamps or whatever they're called, they, I don't have a problem as much with the clay sticking, although I mean that could be white clay in there. I think that probably is white clay. I'm going to um, do a release with this one too. Alright, so I'll be back and we'll make a few tiles. Alright, see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry about this reflection. I have spotlights. They're great for working. Like I see everything great, but not for filming. But there's a reflection. I'll try to avoid that. <laughs> everything reflects there. Uh, real quick, just before we get started claying, this is the poinsettia stamp. It's a stampenda stamp, and it's not very deeply etched, but see the cool design. So that's what I used for that. 
This is the stamp set. It says Hero Arts. And it's a Christmas couple, probably two, three seasons ago. But there's the little bird and the little snowman that I'm going to use. Um, this is my substrate. And I'm going to, I'll clean this all up when I finish so the piece looks really nice. But it's just basically, it's like a piece of pine. And you can see I had it painted. This was painted copper. And I went over it with gold. But um, I wanted to use something I had in my stash. Um, because, you know, money situations and stuff. And I have so much. So um, I just painted it gold. And this way I can do what I said and put those. I'm going to put some like stick penny things on top. So I was very excited about that. I'm also going to glue like some type of rick rack or I like this gold rick rack around the edge and really 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 go gaudy this is going to be gaudy actually I might do silver I think I'm going to do silver anyway so I just wanted to FYI um, this is a gold this paint I used my limer by Jacquard metallic gold but every paint company has gold paint out there metallic paint um, I did base it probably sealed it with gesso first and then painted it gold and that's kind of it represents your grout like that's what you'll see between the tiles unless I fill it in every nook and cranny with uh, <laughs> micro beads but, but my husband cut me this out of pine wood so all right that is that this is just a big 12 by 12 inch tile and this is actually like a matte finish tile um, so I know that um, Lynn of Lynn's Crafts. She's an awesome polymer clay artist. She uses glass or mirror. She bakes on mirror because mirror's got a very flat surface. This has like a matte surface. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a little bumpy. Um, but this is what I use. You don't see the back of my tiles, but see how you can actually, you can catch a reflection of the little, it's like a marbly effect, right? That's the background because that's what I'm baking on. Actually, I don't bake on this one. What am I talking about? These are the tiles that my husband cut me from another 12 by 12 tile to play. But see this again, it's like a, it's not a flat, flat surface. Like a piece of glass would just be flat. But it's um, glossy so the clay comes off there nicely. I don't mind it. I like these. These were just scraps that we had, but he cut me these and they fit perfectly into my oven. Um, so, all right, let's just get started with the clay. For tiles, I like to use pr Primo because um, the clay distorts. Like, I am, I'm not a rough, I'm a pretty rough person to begin with. I'm not gentle, put it that way. This is Sculpey 3. I don't have any white Primo. I think this is, I mixed this with Primo. You can see the difference, like there's, it's like a, my dirty white and my regular white. But I would prefer, you know, I'll recommend you use Primo. And that's this, Sculpey Primo. It's just a little more solid clay. It's still soft, like you can work with it. Um, but just for like, like when you embed things into the clay, you wanna get a nice impression. Um, and the Sculpey 3 is really soft and it's mushy and it won't be as sharp of an impression that's all that's that's my opinion and I'm no expert all right all right let me look over here we're at four minutes already my goodness another I put this here because I go blind by the glare it's my pasta machine let me bring this over here um this is says Amico on it uh it's a pasta machine they sell these at all of your craft stores now. Sculpey probably has one with its name on it, but I don't remember where or when I got this. And originally, people were just buying a pasta machine, like made for pasta making. But now, you know, obviously it's such a great tool to use with polymer clay. Polymer clay companies have created their own. And this is just clamped to my desk. Um, I use these little... Uh, I've watched like on Polymer Clay Adventure, you see the other teachers that use them. There's actually an automatic one too, which is awesome. Um, but they'll put a block of wood under here just to protect your desk because, I don't know, it's kind of the way when you use it, it <coughs> that comes off. It's not a biggie. Um, but when you use it, it really kind of like 
moves around. So anyway, this mine has nine settings, and I'm going to try and get right on top of here for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Like this is the rollers inside. And as I move this little dial, they get closer together. So that's one. And then this is nine. So some of them, one is the thickest and nine is the thinnest. It's, it all depends on your machine. So I cleaned this yesterday too, which I mean, because it does get goopy. And I just take a, um, like a, a, a butt wipe, I call them butt wipes, uh, and just run and roll your rollers and clean your machine sometimes because that's why my white got all gray. <laughs> Um, all right, so that's what I use. I like to condition my clay with a pasta machine. Um, Lori might go when I, she doesn't, she uses her hands. Um, but the thing is, sometimes this clay, like let's, this has just been sitting, on, oh, my knuckles crack, see? This has just been sitting on my desk overnight. So it's, it's, it's pretty hard. It's, it's not warm yet. Oh, my knuckles are cracking, see? So those of you with arthritis or carpal tunnel or or just, you know, weak hands maybe, this could actually be either good or bad. You could get good exercise <laughs> um, or it could hurt. You could cause, you know, it could hurt. It's hard, you know, but it's moving. It's just, just from the warmth of my hands, it's getting softer and softer. But what you can do instead of that, Oh, and I also have a regular, this is like an acrylic roller, so you can just go like that and make yourself a tile if you don't have a pasta machine. That's what Lori Micah does. She has an actual, um, like a, a, a pie roll, what is it, a rolling pin. <laughs> but see, you just, as long as you get it like at least like a quarter inch, you can put it right in a pasta machine, and this is conditioning the clay too. I just keep folding and putting it in there and it's getting softer and softer each time. So this is how I can, and I get sweaty doing that. <laughs> so that's how I condition my clay. I use a pasta machine. Um, so let's get down here and make a tile. Um, I could lower this. I think I will. I might make it a little closer to the surface. So the first one I want to do is make some of these, um, those snowflakes. This isn't a lot of white. Oh, another tip. Let me just show you one more tip. Where are we at? Eight minutes. So this is now Sculpey. I know for, you know, I don't have Primo. Um, but where's my blade? Right here. If you cut this, just little, maybe a quarter of an inch slices and put these through your pasta machine. See that now the difference, it flattens out like that. Then you just start stacking them and your clay is conditioned in no time. So now I have, you know, that became that in that quick of a time. So now I'll take all that other clay I had. Yeah, you gotta watch out for bubbles too because if air bubbles get in there, that isn't good. You don't want air bubbles. Um, it will cause issues after you bake your clay. So, all right, I got to change my battery. Um, when I come back, we're going to make tiles. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. My uh, battery may run out because I didn't change it because I don't have one ready to go yet. So let's get started here. I have these two little, um, these are photopolymer. And I'm going to spritz the clay with a little bit of, well, actually, I'm going to spritz the um, stamps with a little bit of water. And then I'm just going to place it down and put some even pressure. Like, don't distort it as best you can. Like, no rocking. And then pick it up. Way too fine. That's way too, um, that didn't work. Let's do it again. Standing up this time much much more pressure I like that that's good that's a that's a good imprint so can you see that I'm gonna tr try and zoom in oh yeah you can see that all right so the next thing you want to do is always release the clay from your um, tile with a blade kind of help it 
unstick itself because it will distort the image if you just pull the clay. And see, I didn't, because of the tripod's right in the way. So I'm just going to cut this into, um, tiles. Okay, so this will just get made into something else. I'll leave it right here for now. All right, and then I'm going to move you over. So I'm a little upside down. I'm sorry. Oops, see now my, my battery's blinking now. going to take look how cute see I want it to look as as cute as I can and coloring it doesn't mean it's going to be cuter so what I found out like I mean I don't love sorry that was the battery so I'm going to try and do I'm going to make this a little square you know what's kind of interesting is this is white on white so you're not getting a good Oops, that didn't make it any better, Sarah. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I don't have anything. You know what? I can. I can work on this. I'll work on this. It's a little bit, it's gray anyway. But see how even just picking that up with my fingers, I distorted the edge. Listen, I'm a, I guess I'm a bit of a perfectionist, I don't know, and the glare is great. All right, so the first thing I want to do is use, I'm going to use this white, this is Perfect Pearls P Powders by Ranger, and these are really cool. They're mica powders, and I use a brush. You can use your finger, but mine, I get, I mess up. I don't mess up, but I have less control is what I should say. So I just take a brush, like these are, let's see. I think I'm going to use this one. I was using them. This one has, um, you know what, maybe I shouldn't. If it had red on it yesterday, my white could turn out red, which is not a good idea. All right, good. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to make him pearly. I just want to make him pearly. I'm going to make him see him shining. Oh, I love shiny stuff. If it can be shiny, I'm in. And I'm going to put some in his tail. And that's basically it. You just want to give them a hint of, I'm going to, oh, you know what? I want to make their pinks, their cheeks pink. And once you put the powder on, it might not stick as well. So I should have put pink first. See, even this video is messed up. And I know what I'm doing, sort of, kind of. So... Ah, thanks to Callie, I have orange. This is called, I think, tangerine, but this is called Pearl X powder. Same thing, just a different company. But I'm going to put a little bit of this for his nose, for my snowman's nose, and just kind of stick it right in there. There, that's it. I mean, just a little, you know, extra color. Now, I'm going to do green for their um, scarves. So make, what I'm doing over here is I have a whole thing of this. It's filled with mica powders. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to do gold background for them. Oh yeah, that'll look good. Even though my snowflake is silver. Do you think I should do that? Guys, see, this is why I take so much time because I'm indecisive and I can't find my other green. I have these cool greens, but they're like duo green, like green something. This one's spring green. That's the one I was looking for. Yeah, because it's like a little bit darker. So I'm going to do their scarves green this time. So, and watch what happens. It'll just pick up the, um, oh, I'm not even in the shot. Hello. Um, it'll pick up the stripes. So they're really cool. You don't want to push too hard. Just like brush the surface. That kind of looks like a Christmassy green. I like this color. Or even a goldish green. And it's just subtle. It's not like... I could just leave them white 
and put gold on top and be done. And you would still see the image. You would still see that it's a snowman, you know, and I'll put a little green there for his hat. Can you see this? Go in a little bit. You know I don't like to zoom because I always mess up or I forget I'm zoomed and then it... Oh, you know what else? Let me put a little bit of that orange for the beak. The, the beak, the beak, here it is. I mean, I could do yellow, gold, whatever, but I had the orange and it'll tie in with my little snowman's carrot. There, see, you can see the beak. I'm not gonna do their eyes this time because I just, that's all I'm doing for the bird. I'm gonna put gold around it and he's done. Um, but I would like to do the hat. So let me show you what I'm gonna do for that. First, I'm gonna do the gold. And this I will do with my finger. This is the perfect pearls again. And I, I just, I have several gold colors, but this one's just the prettiest, I think. And I'm just gonna gently rub it on the background. Kirby, what the matter? I had a dream about Kirby last night. Is that weird? She was lost. We couldn't find her. That's kind of bad, isn't it? Um, but I knew she was down here, snuggly. Alright, so that looks so pretty. I like this the best out of the silver. I might just make a different snowflake, too. The silver... It looks, I'll show you in a minute and I'll compare. And I'm pushing and it's kind of marking the clay like it's making scratch marks on the clay. That's weird. I don't remember that happening before. But look, it's cute, right? Oh, you know what I didn't do was the pink cheeks. Let's see if I can make their cheeks pink. Let's just try it. I don't know if it's too late because I've already put the white on there and it might not take. Oh, it's taken. I think it's working. Right? I love making things cute. You know what, I've been watching a lot of art journaling and uh, my style, I don't know what style I have because I, I am a copycat and a jack of all trades, a master of none and all that stuff, but I like whimsical. I've decided a lot of times, sometimes comments are so, like they say childish or childlike or something, but I think whimsical is the perfect description because it is whimsical and it is childlike, but that's what I like. I like that. I'm not a real uh, realistic artist, so I've just given in to the fact that I love color. I love bright color, so I'm, I'm finally deciding and realizing that it's okay to like what I like and go with it and don't try to like I am not shabby chic let's just put it out there I'm not not that I don't love it and I love monotone on some things but when I'm working I like to put color so here's what I'm gonna do for this for this hat this is graphite so I don't have black but this is the Inca gold and it's basically it's a um, let's see what it says it says fast dying metal fast drying metal gloss paint and I just put some of that on a brush and I'm gonna make his hat blackish and I'm really trying to do this neatly because I don't want to mess him up I did this is like my third snowman that I've done and I don't want to mess him up I think this is going to be my most successful the other thing about me is you have to know when to stop type thing and that is an issue for me I embellish the heck out of things sometimes and sometimes less is more now this is kind of a fat brush I think I'm gonna go in with my little brush this one how about this one um, yeah you don't need to keep going you can stop be done call it done call it I need someone to call it for me um, yeah but look, I mean, he just wouldn't look right without a black hat, right? I should, I could put it in his eyes and his buttons. Should I do it or am I going to mess it up? <gasps> that looks really cute. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do anything to the bird, but snowman, if I, even if I just have a little 
hint, there we go. They have coal, right? Buttons, or coal eyes and buttons. That's it, ta-da! And it's just a hint of gold. They're done, I'm gonna bake them. And the next thing I wanted to show you guys was just this, um, those snowflakes that I did. So I'm gonna turn this off, it's nine minutes, I'll be right back and we'll do the filler tile. Okay, this is my polymer clay, oh, my snowflake stamp, duh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spritz it. Actually, I think I'm gonna try, this is what I'm going for here, just these filler tiles with um, the snowflakes. So I'm just spritzing the clay, actually. And I'm just gonna line this up, kind of making sure I cover most of it, and I'm gonna stand up and give it pressure. A good amount of pressure. I wanna get some good texture. Let's see. No, I don't love it. I want this one to be way deeper. Some of them look good, but still, I'm gonna give it much, 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 much more pressure. So I'm gonna just stick this right back in the pasta machine. And I will do, I'm gonna really try and really push down. <clears throat> Sydney Holt is one of the teachers from Palmer Clay Adventure. She said she would actually stand on some of her clay pieces when she wanted a good impression. Um, so I mean, it's not, you know, there we go, I love it. And that just released so nicely. Oh my gosh, let's ha have a look at that. See, that looks so pretty just the way it is, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back a little. Um, I just wanna make filler tiles, and by, by that I mean the little tiles in the mosaic that are just gonna be here and there to fill in the spaces that, um, I have to move the, I'm sorry, I have to move the tripod because I can't get my full okay sorry okay so here's that piece of clay it looks so pretty snowflakes are gorge right and I'm gonna start by getting my edges even so take off these kind of scrap edges and I think I'm gonna make all of these um, no, I think I'll do half silver, half gold. I have to. Well, I don't have to. <laughs> all right. So, the first, all I'm going to do, this is the most simple thing to do. I'm so sorry about that. Um, make little strips. So, I'm going to go, I'm going to try and keep these little on the little side because I tend to need little pieces a lot. Like this is a small piece, this is small, but I wanted to make them even smaller. So then once you have them cut into strips, I'm gonna start putting these on my, uh, on my baking tile. So I'll put the baking tile over here because so, I'm gonna bake this I'm going to bake this one. So I'm going to move them into a position where I can load this up with more tiles. And where's my little blade? See guys, this is what happens that takes up time. That's why I don't upload. Look, this is all my clay tools. And I haven't, I've gotten these over time. So don't, all you need is a blade. You definitely need a blade. Um, but people use like knitting needles and all types of stuff like to, to work with clay. You don't have to go out and buy anything fancy. You can start playing. What is this one doing all the way over here? It's weird. Um, you can start playing with what you have. 
cookie cutters, you know, if you have any cookie cutters, which actually I do, and I have plastic ones downstairs that I forgot about that are um, Christmas shapes. I have Christmas shapes. So I'm just taking this blade and making different size like that. I don't even, okay. I love that. That's going to be a cute, t oh, but first I'm going to put, look at this. Oops, see it's stuck. If it sticks, don't force it. Like pick it up like that so you don't distort it. But that's super pretty. This one didn't have anything on it, so I'm scrapping it. This is cute. And then, so basically that's all I'm going to do is just make different sizes. And we're going to put, we're going to just rub some metallic stuff on here. I'm going to use gold, right? I said gold and silver. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull my rubbing buff. I have a silver rubbing buff that I like a lot. I don't have silver um, Inca gold, and I do have silver mica powders, but they were very granulate. Like, this is what the silver mica powder looked like. I'm going to try the rub and buff this time and see what the difference is. So this is rub and buff and they do it's a meta wax metallic finish silver leaf. And this is um Michaels has this Hobby Lobby. I don't know if I've ever seen it at um AC Moore. And gently just over the raised surfaces. Don't push too hard. You know what, I really like silver leaf though. Um, it's such a pretty color. This is gorge. I like this a lot. And it's just a hint of shine. It's not, it's nothing crazy. It, that's all it is. It is what it is. Don't, you know, that's all I wanted it to be. So, fabulous. Just, oh, look at that one. Beautiful, right? I mean, you could probably just do all one whole thing. Like, just instead of doing them separately, go down the whole thing. And then cut it, right? So I'm going to do the rest gold. And I really like, this I'm pretty sure is mica powders. I like, that's this one, my, this is my favorite color, it's, you can tell I have the least of it. Um, what else was I going to say? So yeah, and then I'm going to bake these. I don't want that there. Might as well do the gold. I have gold rub and buff, let me see what that looks like. This is called... Greasing gold. I'm going to do it with this and see the difference. I don't mind mixing the golds up. That to me is pretty. Ugh, okay, that was tight. So this is looking much richer already. This is like way um, more yellow, I guess I want to say. I'm going to move these. See, this takes up time. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> All right. I like it. It's richer. It's way richer. Look at this. You see the difference? More yellow. Still pretty. See, this is my fave, I think. I think I'm going to go with that. But these are pretty, too. And then you can buff it. It's rub and buff because you can buff the, uh, the product. So after I bake it, I think I'll come back and I'll just rub it. Maybe I'll do that on camera. And we'll talk about uh, what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to just do these. I'm going to do these with the um, powder these over here. I like the smell of that too, the rub and buff. It has like a, it's like oil. It smells like an oil smell. 
Yeah, this is so pretty. This gold color is just, it's, I think this reminds me of like 14 karat gold. That's why, I don't know, it just has that color, coloration to it. And the other one maybe is more like 18 karat or something, right? It's a little more subtle. All right, so I'm gonna bake these and I'll be right back. Okay, I decided to do one more thing and then we're gonna call it a day, but this is I want to make one more of these snowflakes and I ended up going back over this with the rub and buff and I got it on the gems which these are not glass I don't think and I'm going to talk to you more about that um, you know and I mean it's fine I rubbed it off I buffed it off and I like the way the silver looks it's more creamy looking so I'm going to make another one so I just basically um, I'm just spritzing why not and I'm going to give some pressure this is a nice deep etched um, stamp. Good, 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 good. Okay. What I want to talk about though is when you embed gems or beads or anything into your clay, you can bake it, but make sure they're glass. These are a tulip, I'm pretty sure this is the tulip brand rhinestones, and these are over by like, uh, I've never done it before, but like bedazzling or something, I'm not sure. These are Swarovski, so you know that those are glass. These were on clearance, and I'm almost out of them. They're so pretty. Um, but this is glass. I, I oh, See, I forget. I think this was supposed to be my glass section, but it's not necessarily <laughs> anymore. But it, when in doubt, don't bake it in there. Oh, I might use this one. This is just stinking pretty. It's got that um, Aurora Borealis in it. That's what I'm going to use. Okay, so I want to just talk about, I'm going to make another one of these uh, snowflakes. See, I can't pull that up. You can't pull it up. you got to release it with a blade. And I'm trying to go around my tripod. And I, uh, I got to move it. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm, I'm struggling. Okay. So that's just so that I can move it. Uh, let me go ahead and cut it into a square so we can just really start working on it. I guess my blade isn't that sharp, huh? It's the angle. My hand is under the tripod. It's kind of hard. All right, so there's our snowflake. The first thing I want to do, I'm going to just make an imprint. On this one I have a star, which I like, but I'm just going to use this Aurora Borealis. I'm just going to set it in the middle and gently push. Like, I could use a tool or something. Like, you know, I'm going to use the back of my, um, this is flat. It's the back of my X-Acto blade. And just gently push. I don't want to fully embed it, but that looks good. And I'm going to take it out with my X-Acto knife too. And I'm going to set it aside. Don't lose it because that's what you're using. But see, it made a nice little impression. So now when I bake it, I just pop it back in there. Now these are heart um, crystals. And I don't think they're plastic, but I have, I mean, I don't think they're glass, but I have so many, we all do, of these blings that we get. 50 cents, right? Self-stick gems, uh, but they are not glass. Clear AB, 7 millimeter, but it, it would say glass. Usually what I've noticed is if you are getting a glass rhinestone, it says it on there. So that's what I would suggest. So now... All I'm going to do is as gently as I can go around here and place these in this little heart section. Okay, so I happen to have six left and they have adhesive on them, but I don't mind. I'm just going to put them in there. Three, four, five, six. And I have the clear ones too, but I love the red. The red is for the piece I'm doing. This is going to be perfect. So I'm going to just 
place them in there. They're not exactly the same size and they're these some of these hearts are distorted. Like this heart over here is much longer cuz just of the way I pushed it into the clay. But they're going to be fine. I mean, they look perfectly fine. You know what? I'm not even going to do this right now. I am going to Oh, you know what? I have to because they won't fit unless I have the impression. Unless I make the the impression after I bake it, this might not fit. Like I can tell already, this is way narrower than the actual um, gem. So I have to change the impression and make it so that when it's hard and I come back with these, they're going to fit in here because otherwise it'll be, it won't be sitting correctly. I'm, you know what I like to say? I'm not a perfectionist, but maybe I am not a perfectionist. Usually I'm good enough. Like it has to be good enough. I'm going to settle with that. I'm definitely a good enough. So, oh gosh, the, <laughs> the adhesive was sticking to my blade. Of course, so see, this is time consuming, but I wanted to show you, just make sure you get a good impression. Then we have to take them out and set them to the side so we don't lose them. And then I'm going to do the, um, all right, you know what? I might as well keep it wrong. I'm going to go away and be right back. All right, so I got them out of there. And you can see that it's like not the exact shape. But when the clay gets baked, you won't even notice that. So I'm going to do this with the rub and buff. I'm going to use the, the silver rub and buff. I just, I went over this one and it definitely, I like the effect better. Look at that. It's like silver leafing. And that's exactly what this is called. So I'm gen gently going to rub and buff. First I'm going to rub all around the raised surfaces. I, I don't really want it to go onto the snowflake part, so I'm going to try hard not to touch inside the snowflake part, just the raised surfaces and see if I can do that now. I've got quite a lot on my finger. You can see it's like, so you really kind of almost want to rub a little off and go in with just your finger, like the pad of your finger. It a little goes a long way with this stuff. See how it kind of had a little cakiness there? You don't want that crumminess like the crumbs. Look at that. That's all I had to do. Good. I didn't get it on the um, the flower part. I mean the, the, the snowflake. Good. Look at that. All right. I'm going to bake this and then I'll be right back. Okay. So I got these out of the oven and I'm noticing that the rub and buff, uh, gold rub and buff, I like the silver. The silver is all good. I like, I kind of buffed them a little like I just rubbed them with a paper towel. The, the gold that we use, the mica powders, I like them, but the gold that I use, the rub and buff or whatever, I, I'm pretty sure I used rub and buff, right? So I'm going to grab them, pull them out of here. These I don't like, like they're kind of, there's like black or whatever. See how it looks? I guess that's an antique gold. That's probably what it is. If I could find it, I have the silver leaf. Here it is. It's called Grecian gold, see? So I'm not crazy about that. So what I decided to do, and what another great thing to do with, uh, I'm just gonna put a paper towel. Um, is this, is Inca gold metallic rub can be used on the dry tiles, like after you bake them, the hard tiles. It's just that mine is very dry, so I'm going to squirt it, put a little moisture in there. Um, and you can use that, like I didn't even have to do anything. They could have just been plain white, bake them, and then when they're out of the oven, um, put a little rub on them. There's some type of color there. All right, so I'm going to get some of this on my finger. Yeah, I like this color better. It is called gold, just straight gold. Now these are so little, they're hard to hold. 
but I'm going to hold it. This one especially. This one has like, see the dark in the center, the diamonds? Fixed it. Fixed it. I think that's because it, it, it's supposed to, it was Grecian gold. It's supposed to be like that color, but that wasn't, I don't love that color, so. I like a true gold, I guess. See, it's like more of a bronzy gold or something. So these are, I'm just changing it. And there we go. Did I do them all? I think I did. And then these little guys turned out pretty cool. Um, I did two more in a different manner. I did them with the silver rub and buff and I like that. I didn't use the black. I gave them a blue hat. So I kept them, I went even less. Less was more for me. And then this is the gold um, mica powders. So I like that. I wonder if I can even... Maybe just go around the edges with the Inca gold. That's pretty cool, just around the edge. Um, so what's left? In the oven right now is the snowflake that we're going to embed the crystals in. And I'll be back when that's done. And then we'll wrap it up and I'll talk about what I'm going to do next. Okay. All right. While we were waiting for towels to dry, I glued this ribbon around the edge of my board and at the very end when I finished putting everything on here I'm gonna paint the back too and clean this all up because there's actually like clay on here there's all types of stuff and I'll sand it and give it one good coat of black but I love how that looks it just finishes it off I'm gonna um, be drilling through that but and I just have to say those of you who haven't tried it please try Fabri-Tac it is, I love this glue. It's stinky, and I kind of like the smell too, but it works so great. You'll never have an issue. Mm, I actually like to buy it in the smaller tubes because, I don't know, sometimes on the bigger tube, like you get that little bit down bottom and it takes forever. But anyway, I love Fabri-Tac. Just total my recommend. I recommend it for fabric, lace, glass, leather, wood. It's for everything, really. Um, but it does have like a, um, kind of the consistency of hot glue. It has little, um, stretchies, spider webs. My battery is blinking, so we'll see how this goes. But this is what I just brought upstairs. So here is my snowflake that we're going to glue our gems into. And then I just made these. These are, um, in the dollar bin right now at, um, Michael's. Not that one. These four, I think they are, I'm pretty sure. Dollar fifty bin. These I just thought would make really cute tiles. Just little filler tiles. So let's see. I did the other day I did the ladybug in the bee. That's the bee. That's the ladybug. And then I just did a bunch more um, dragonflies. You guys know I love my dragonflies and butterflies. And they're real simple to do. So you just get lots of little little cute fillers. I'm trying to restock. I need tiles. So I have about like 15 or so in a pile here of those. Just like, you know, just little filler tiles. Um, so let's go ahead and glue our gems in. I am using uh, <clears throat> Clementional Magic, I almost said, Glossy Accents. And I'm just going to... Put a little dab in each. I don't want it to squeeze out necessarily, so I'm just going to put a little dab of it and in the center. And then we're just going to place, and these are all stuck together because they have adhesive back. So just put them in their spot. Hey, it's not moving. I don't know. Maybe it's better to take the adhesive back off. 
but once it sticks, it sticks. Um, Glossy Accents is a very strong glue. Once it is dry, it takes a minute to dry. So it's not one of those glues that you're gonna get adhesion right away. It's something that you might wanna leave overnight. And once it's dry, there's some glue there. Um, it'll, it'll be dry, so that's why I like it. But for a fast drying, that Fabri-Tac dries pretty fast too. I mean, I love Fabri-Tac. I really should like call the company and be like, send me some, I love it. No, I don't know. I don't know how we go about doing that yet. Getting sponsors or something. So here we go. Oh, I love the Aurora Borealis gems. So that's what it looks like. All right. And even though it, it'll take a minute to dry, those are in there because I already embedded the shape. So it's nice and uh, in the spot. So look, let me show you what I've done. I think I'm going to uh, walk you through how I put this together the next. Okay, that was the end of my battery. So this battery is lasting. Um, all right, the last thing I want to talk about for today is what else would you guys like to see um so we've done a little bit of embedding in the clay we've done some coloring with the mica powders um what else did we do just making the filler tiles so we did all my where where did i put all them i think i just dumped them right in here but we did just making filler tiles with a stamp and then metallic either rubs or mica, mica powders. So we did those. We talked a little bit about embedding tile, I'm sorry, not tiles, charms or metal into the clay, right? Didn't we? Um, also using images and a glass piece for a tile. Um, so we've talked about a lot of stuff, buttons, embedding buttons into the clay, right? Um, you know what I want to, maybe I'll do a little video on gold leafing next time. I don't think I've done that or, um, I don't know that I've even seen, um, you know what I'll do next time is letters. I'm going to talk about my, the letters that I use to make, um, my tiles because I get a lot of questions about that and gold leafing <clears throat> and maybe I'll review a little bit on painting because um, I want to make a couple of these with red green and gold and silver I think I'm going to do red green and gold paint and I'm going to use stickles um, silver stickles so I just happen to pull a few um, blank white tiles that I could paint so I'll do painting this is what I mean by gold leafing, just making <coughs> sticks of clay with gold leafing on it for to use as spacer beads and things. You'll see what I mean, not spacer beads, my gosh. Filler, filler, they're all filler tiles. Um, there's also, you can stamp on the clay with black ink. I like that. I think I might like to add some music to this piece, so we'll see. Um, but I can add that into the next video. And then these are another filler tile that I, excuse me, I thought looked like, um, snow or wind. I kind of like this. It has, it's just a, um, stamp that I, I use for a background or a lot of clay tiles. It has like a, a script in the background and then scrolls. This is Hot Fudge Studio, Hampton Art. So I like this one and I just happened to, go through um, some of my other tiles, my white tiles. I think I stamped it with black ink and then I might, I think I just put a wash of blue over it and some stickles and I like that as a filler tile. So I'm starting to pull from my stash now. I think I've made enough tiles to complete this piece. I definitely have a lot of tiles um, Christmassy themed. Um, so for next time I think we'll do 
painting some I might do I'm gonna do that now and I'm gonna save it for next week so I'm gonna post a polymer clay video one a week I'm gonna try we'll see um, I also want to do art journaling I was talking about so if you have any suggestions or things you want to see that I haven't made clear like I was even thinking I could add this to this piece I didn't want it to be really religious but I definitely love angels so I might throw this in here I mean it definitely looks cool see these three this is what happens I start to play and these three go together like you know what I mean the color then I would do white um, where's my silver white and my little silver birdie here white so you just like space them three 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 then I'm gonna figure out what Merry Christmas I want to use I definitely want to use this one too this home for the holidays so we'll see I'll talk about how I design the piece um, two so that'll be another and then the final thing will be to make the um the beads for the top so this one could take around three weeks maybe to finish so i will be done for today so leave me any comments or suggestions and thanks for watching